Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, the original YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the shop, and this is tips number 876 entitled Magnetic Drill Press. I recently received this Viver Magnetic Drill Press from them. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to do this. However, I did receive this free. I want to be up front with you. If you like it and want to buy one, there will be a link in the description so you can look at it on their site and you would get a 5% discount. So let's get this unboxed and uh, thank you to Beaver for doing that and take a look at what we got here. I haven't pulled it out of the box yet. I have cut the box open so I don't have to bore you with that. So let's begin. And this is part one of a two-part video because there's an awful lot to cover. And in the second part I'm going to do some serious drilling and other operations with this really neat machine. I've never used one, so there's a learning curve here. Join me. You may have watched a recent video of mine where I demonstrated these beaver annular cutters. It was kind of a popular video. I hope you have seen it. If not, I'll put the name of it on the screen. However, these cutters, believe it or not, will not work in this magnetic drill press. And I'll explain that all to you in a few minutes. All right, let's pull the accessories out. Cutters. And there's directions. Now, I've never seen a carton like this before. This is not wood, although there's a wooden bottom. But look at the thick corrugated uh, cardboard. I think they're getting away from using styrofoam. And this box is bulletproof. Oh, it even smells good. There it is. So this is a very strong electromagnet on the bottom. And I have a little assembly to do here in regards to the handles and the knobs and things like that. And then we'll give it a test run and we'll open up all of these accessories and see what we got. Now I might speed up some of that footage. Alright, I pre-split the packages here to speed things up. But in this package we have... chuck key, and a half inch chuck. Needless to say, this will not be a Jacobs, but I hope it's a good one. And then this one are the handles. some wrenches. And this is the little coolant tank or lubrication tank which I may or may not use but we need a lot of lubrication when we use annular cutters. There's the safety strap. I'm afraid that doesn't look very sturdy. And then in the final package here there are five annular cutters. Now these are smaller ones, most of them, than what I have in the other kit. Very nicely packaged. Everything's really doubly packaged. Okay, I've unwrapped everything and there it is. And here's a little packing list telling the different uh, names of the accessories. And the annular cutters are metric. So here is a list of the six in the metric size. The 30 millimeter is uh, simply the length of them or the depth that you can cut or the thickness of the metal that you can cut. And it's shorter than the ones that were in the other kit, as you can see. Plus they were larger diameter. So these six, again, are metric and they have a three-quarter shank, but it's a totally different 
shank than the old Weldon type that I had shown you in the last video that is three quarter diameter and has two flats. So I'll put these aside. These will not work in this drill press because they have the wrong shank. However, these would work in this machine if you had an adapter. So here's an adapter that goes in the bridge press for the Weldon and it has two set screws. The advantage of these, and they're called one touch side lock shanks that can be uh, inserted without tools. Just put it in and lift the little sleeve and turn it and it's you can do it almost with one hand. You could do it if you're on the 30th floor of a building and uh, drilling a girder and you wouldn't uh, drop the tools. Okay, here's a close-up of the shank of the metric annular cutters. There's a flat spot. It's three-quarter in diameter. There are three little grooves with an indentation, hemispherical, and that allows you to turn the sleeve here, this black sleeve, on the spindle of the drill press. So in it goes. Just like that and it would be ready to drill. Now to get it out you just twist it and it'll actually kind of pop out. It's spring loaded. Watch this. And you can pull it out and again no tools required. And here's the nameplate tag if you want to look at this and you can pause your video if you want. Well I'm still showing you things on this side of the drill press. These two plastic knobs here can be removed and the little bracket for the coolant can be mounted right here and there's a valve and a little tube that came with it and this tube would go right into this little compression fitting and provide coolant or lubrication right into the cutter so that the, the fluid would travel down the spindle and through this hole and right to where it needs to be for the cutting. One other thing I need to show you here. So this is the pilot or the needle as they call it in the directions. Notice that it's round but there's a flat spot and the head is a little bit larger so it cannot fall through. Now again, this is not a drill. This is strictly a pilot or a pointer that can go to your layout line or whatever. But the purpose of the flat is that the coolant can run down right along the pilot and into the area that is required. In other words, not out, the fluid is not out here where it is uh, doing no good at all. Here's the drill chuck that came with it. And it has a capacity of 16 millimeter, just like the old movies. And notice there's a 3 8 fine thread right there, American. And then here is the adapter with a thread and the quick shank that I just talked about. And I will be doing some drilling with this in another video using this chuck and maybe some tapping as well. And that would fit also right into the spindle. It came with quite a long cord. I do not know how long but you can see there's quite a, a few wraps here and it's grounded 110 volt and it's a rather limber flexible cord compared to some of those horrible vinyl cords that you see on modern products. You are looking at the bottom of the drill press right now and these are the electromagnets down here. Here is the switch for the magnets. These are neodymium magnets I just laid there for demonstration purposes. Now watch as I push the button for the magnet. Pretty neat, huh? And now I turn it off again but these are strong magnets that have to be pulled off. And here's a plate of steel also for demonstration purposes. Okay, here's the control panel and it's pretty neat, isn't it? So on and off for the motor. However, you cannot turn the motor on. Watch. It's not going on because the magnet is not on. So now I'll turn the magnet on and then the spindle turn. 
and at variable speed. Now it's important not to leave the magnet on because I think that it probably can overheat but this little switch right here is forward and reverse. I don't know why they got it marked L0 and R but this is forward. And that is reverse. And the range of speeds is 0 to 800. Now, I don't think it'll run at 0, and we don't want it. I hope it has a lot of torque at lower speeds. I'm not interested in 800 RPM. I'm interested in 2 and 300 RPM for that size cutter. So we'll experiment with that. So now you know what the controls look like. And one important thing to show you here is that I have already mentioned, I believe, that the magnet has to be on because if there's an interruption in power for whatever reason or the cord gets pulled out, the uh, machine will go off, the motor will go off. There is a 5 inch travel approximately, or should I say range, so watch as I raise it as far as it'll go, and this is a 6 inch roll. So we got about five inches of movement, which is more than you get on many drill presses. This is a 1400 watt machine, so that it'll run off a household current, the average 15 amp circuit. This is metal, so it's really, and I love the color, don't you? You would think maybe this would be plastic, but it is metal. This is plastic over here, but aren't all drills plastic? But looking right here, you notice there's a double dovetail. So we got a dovetail right here and right here and I'm going to show you the reason for that in a minute but here is the rack because naturally it's rack and pinion for the feed and there are I guess I got to turn around to show you here there are gibs one two three that can be adjusted for wear. I can't imagine I would ever need to adjust that. I think this is a pretty cool feature. So in addition to the five inches of travel you have here, you can loosen this screw right here and move the entire head up or down into different positions depending on your work or even possibly the length of the cutter that you are using. That's the purpose of the second dovetail here that I showed you a few minutes ago. So I'll tighten that back up now. This is pretty important. When you release the quick mechanism to take the cutter out, make sure that you grab it or you have something padded underneath because you will dull your cutter because it's, it's almost ejected as you turn that. There's a spring that pushes it down and you'd knock the corners off of these teeth right away if this would fall on the floor or hit a beam or a piece of steel. So be aware of that. Also they said to give this thing a rest every two or three hours or the magnet will overheat and matter of fact the magnet is quite hot right now. Only two things disappoint me about this so far even though I haven't run it and number one is that these are metric sizes and they do not go very large. Matter of fact I'll read you in a minute the, the size of the largest one but I'm also disappointed in the fact that I cannot use these big cutters that I have here with the regular welding shank. I cannot use them on this machine. So I will have to get some larger cutters with the quick shank. But I do love that feature. I'm sure I will love it. I haven't actually used it yet. The largest one right here is how many millimeters? It's, a, it's 20 millimeter, so it's not quite an inch. Oh, this is a bigger one. The largest one is uh, 27 millimeters, so that's just a little bit over one inch. But that will suffice for most jobs that I do around the Peterson machine shop. I installed the chuck because I will be able to drill holes with twist drills 
up to about half inch or a little bit over whatever the capacity of that chuck is and I had hoped in a future video to do some tapping with it because there is a reverse on this model they make several models of this and I'm gonna put this actual model number into the description so be sure and read that or I might put it on the screen but what concerns me here about tapping is two things really one that the hardened jaws of the chuck do not grip that well on a hard tool so that may be a problem and the other problem is that this is a uh, threaded onto that adapter. I showed you that a little bit earlier. So when I put the machine in reverse, more than likely the entire chuck is going to spin off if I'm backing a tap out under power. So that may not work. That remains to be seen in a future video. Thank you again to Vivor for sending this to me. I hope that uh, you appreciate it as much as I do. Again, if you're interested, there's information there in the description if you want to buy one of these. Another thing to note here is that this machine can be used in the horizontal position, in construction, or even upside down, but you would always use a safety strap because there is some risk in that. But I will have a lot of fun because this has probably a greater drilling capacity than the two drill presses that I have right behind me. However, we have to hold this on to the work with the magnet. So I can't use a vise under here just as I would a regular drill press. So. Also, on the website, I think I remember correctly, they did not describe this correctly. They said it was two speed. So I expected there would be a low and a high range, but that is not true. I'm not sure why, when they print these manuals over in China, they don't hire an American man from New York City to write the manual because they misspell things and they misuse words and, and uh, phrases and that that it just doesn't make sense here in America. And that's been true with foreign products ever since the first Volkswagens came out. They called the, uh, the, the heater uh, the warmer coffer. <laughs> and the, uh, windshield wipers were called drizzle flippins, all kinds of, uh, well those are German words I guess, but uh, there's no Chinese words here, but yet, you know, it, it makes the manual semi-worthless and the first six pages are approximately are about safety. You can't emphasize that enough, but yet how many people do read that? But you should read this and because these things can be dangerous. Any large drill press, if it's not held, properly or, or a drill I should say can spin around and it can be extremely dangerous and don't forget to turn the magnet off it is getting hot so that concludes part one I know I haven't drilled a hole yet and I haven't made a single chip and that might disappoint some of you but there'll be a follow-up video number 877 which will be part two of the Viver magnetic drill Thanks for watching and thanks to Viva for sending this. I hope I was honest and forthright in my description. See you next time.